stunning pictures show the wreckage of a B-17 Flying Fortress lying at the bottom of the Adriatic Sea after it was shot down 30 miles off the coast of Croatia during World War II. The Boeing aircraft was on a bombing mission to Vienna, when it made its final journey on November 6, 1944. After suffering too much damage from the enemy, the plane crash landed in the Adriatic Sea 31 miles, 50 kilometers, from the Croatian coast near the village of Rudkovic. Jaw-dropping images show the wreckage of the plane over 70 years later as it remains intact. Its nose is crushed but the pilot's cockpit is visible as the windscreen has shattered. The plane's wheels are starting to sink into the seabed, raising questions of how long the wreckage will remain before disintegrating. Its engines and wings are covered with algae, sand and dead crustaceans. The plane was renowned for its defensive capabilities, and a turret with two machine guns was positioned on the tail. The Sturd A4 engine aircraft was built in the 1930s for the United States Air Army Corps, USARC, during a period when twin engines were the norm. The aircraft had only arrived at the base in Amandola, Italy on November 3, 1944 before sinking three days later. After unloading its cargo on the fateful day, the plane was hit by German air defense over Slovenia, so the pilot veered towards Vis Island which was the closest Allied airport. The pilot landed on the sea which allowed the crew to evacuate on inflatable rafts. Company pilot U.S. Army Air Force 2nd Lieutenant Ernest Vino died at the scene as the crew couldn't rescue him in time before the aircraft filled with water and sank. He was just 25, and grew up in Millinocket, Maine, and served with the 340th Bomber Squadron, part of the 97th Bomber Group. The remains of the B-17 on the Adriatic seabed is one of the best preserved World War II plane wrecks due to its depth of over 60 meters, making it difficult for divers to reach. Photographer and diver Martin Smiska, 40, of Vietnamska Slovakia, captured the stunning images during a visit to this last year. It's basically untouched, the feeling of being under there is quite overwhelming. You constantly want to see what's behind the next corner, he said. Dot at some point it will be gone, so I'm thrilled to be able to show these images and talk about the history behind it, he added. Along with the B-17, Mr. Smithsker also photographed a fallen B-24 Liberator, nicknamed Tule American which was discovered in 2009. The Boeing B-17 was a four-engine heavy bomber developed in the U.S. in the 1930s that became symbolic of the country's air power during the Second World War. Looking to replace Martin B-10, the USARC, 
United States Army Air Corps, tendered a proposal for a multi-engine bomber that could reach an altitude of 10,000 feet and reinforce the country's air capabilities. Competing against two other aircraft manufacturers at the time, Douglas and Martin, to build 200 bombers, the Boeing entry outperformed both competitors. While Boeing lost out on the initial contract to Douglas, because the company's prototype crashed, the USARC ordered a further 13 for evaluation, before it was eventually introduced in 1938 after numerous design changes. Even before the war, the B-17 received recognition, with the nickname Flying Fortress coined by a Seattle Times reporter. In January 1938, Group Commander Colonel Robert Olds flew the Rick 17 from the United States East Coast to its West Coast, setting a transcontinental record of 13 hours 27 minutes. He also broke West to East Coast record on his return trip in 11 hours 1 minute, averaging 245 miles per hour. But the bomber was mainly used during the Second World War in precision daylight bombing campaigns against military and industrial targets to weaken Nazi Germany. In early 1940 the RAF entered into an agreement with the US to be provided with 20 B-17 CS, which were given the service named Fortress I. But their initial missions over Germany were unsuccessful. But they were widely used by American forces in the Pacific and in a succession of raids targeting German factories. In February 1944, the B 17s flew a vital mission to destroy the factories that kept the Luftwaffe flying in what was termed Big Week and helped secure air superiority over the cities, factories and battlefields of Western Europe in preparation for the invasion of France in 1944. The Luftwaffe found it easier to attack a flying fortress head-on, and Americans coined the phrase bandits at 12 o'clock high as a result. German studies revealed that on average 20 hits with 20mm shells were required to gun down a B-17. Forty B-17s were captured by the Luftwaffe. In or 3,500 B-17s were involved in bombing raids on factories in Germany. Two hundred and forty-four planes were lost in just a week, but the back of the factories producing for the Luftwaffe were fatally broken. The B-17s were also used in the war in the Pacific earlier in the Second World War, where it conducted raids against Japanese shipping and airfield sites. Many crew members who flew in B-17s received military honors, with 17 receiving the highest military decoration awarded by the United States, the Medal of Honor. The B-17 went on to become the third most produced bomber of all time, behind the four-engined consolidated B-24 Liberator and the multi-role, twin-engine junk as Ju-88, and dropped more bombs than any other aircraft in World War II.
The plane was used in every World War II combat zone, and by the end of production in 1945, Boeing had built over 12,000 bombers. It dropped approximately 640,000 tons of bombs over Nazi Germany, over a third of the estimated one. Five million tons of bombs dropped in total by U.S. aircraft. Only of the most most famous B-17s, the Memphis Belle, was immortalized in a 1970 Hollywood movie of the same name. The bomber also featured in earlier films such as Air Force and 12 O'Clock High. As of October 2019, there are 9 B-17 aircraft that remain airworthy, although none of them have ever flown in combat. Dozens more remain in storage, or on display, is museums the oldest being a D-series, that flown in combat in the Pacific on the first day of World War II.